In the year 2100, our world may look nothing like today. Entire coastlines swallowed by the sea, cities that once thrived, now lie beneath the waves. Across the planet, disasters strike with terrifying force. Hurricanes rage, forests burn, the climate once stable has turned against us. Scientists warn sea levels could rise nearly two meters. That's enough to erase entire nations from the map. New York, Shanghai, Mumbai, megacities home to millions, could vanish beneath the ocean's surface. Imagine being a child, watching your city disappear underwater. No home, no safety, just endless ocean. Time is moving faster than we think. The choices we make today will decide if humanity survives tomorrow. Nature is sending us a warning. Storms are growing stronger and the skies are filled with fury. Infrastructure, once symbols of progress, will be swallowed by the chaos of rising waters. The ocean is taking back the land, and with it everything we thought was permanent. The polar ice caps are melting at a speed never recorded in human history. Every second glaciers release billions of tons of fresh water into the ocean. This isn't a distant threat, it's happening right now. When these frozen giants collapse, they do not simply vanish. They roar into the sea, raising tides that swallow coasts. Every fall of ice brings us closer to an ocean without boundaries. Scientists predict that sea levels could rise by two meters before this century ends. Imagine New York disappearing, Miami gone, entire countries erased from the map. The ocean does not negotiate, it takes what it wants. While some regions drown, others will burn. In parts of the Middle East and Africa, summer heat may soar beyond 55 degrees Celsius. For billions of people, stepping outside could feel like stepping into fire. Dust storms will swallow the horizon, rivers will vanish, farmlands will turn to cracked wastelands. What once fed the world will become a graveyard of dry soil. Crops will fail and hunger will spread like wildfire. Entire regions may face famine, not because food does not exist, but because the land itself has given up. The oceans, too, will change. Warmer waters will erase coral reefs, killing entire marine ecosystems. Our planet's blue heart will fade to gray. Hurricanes will grow stronger, powered by rising ocean heat. Winds will reach speeds that rip entire cities apart. What once was rare will become the new normal. And then comes the silent killer, air. As heat rises, air quality will plummet. Breathing will no longer be effortless. It will be a privilege. This is not the plot of a dystopian movie. It is the most likely future written by the choices we make today. By 2100, climate refugees could outnumber war refugees. Entire nations may vanish, forcing millions to flee rising seas. Borders will close. Chaos will follow. Families will march for days across cracked deserts, searching for a safe place to live. But in a world running out of resources, where is safety? Where is hope? Crowded camps will rise on the edges of surviving cities. Disease will spread faster than aid can arrive. Humanity will learn what desperation truly means. And in the oceans, floating megacities will appear. Massive steel structures drifting in endless waters. But life in these cities will not be equal. Survival will belong to those who can afford it. Water will become the new oil. A resource so precious, nations will fight wars to control it. Every drop will be worth more than gold. Imagine soldiers guarding rivers. Imagine armies marching, not for land, but for lakes and rain. This is the future we are creating. Conflict will not only be about survival, it will be about power. The rich will hoard water and food, while the poor fight over crumbs. Inequality will turn into open war. Entire governments may collapse under the weight of climate disaster, when resources vanish, so does order. What follows is chaos, hunger, and fear. But humanity is not powerless. We are inventors, dreamers, survivors. The same hands that build destruction can also build hope. Scientists are creating cities that float, farms that grow food without soil, machines that pull water from the very air we breathe. 
Fusion Power promises clean, limitless energy. If we succeed, we could end our addiction to oil forever. The question is, will we act in time? Some believe the answer lies beyond Earth, colonies on Mars, orbital cities circling the skies. For a few, escape will become the ultimate solution. But what about the billions left behind? Will they be abandoned on a dying planet while the wealthy flee to the stars? This is the moral dilemma of the 22nd century. Technology can save us, but only if we share it. If it becomes a weapon of greed, humanity will lose, no matter how advanced we are. Imagine a world where water is sold like luxury jewelry, where billionaires live in glass towers and the poor drink from poisoned rivers. That world is closer than you think. Already corporations are buying rights to rivers, lakes, and even rainfall. They call it business, but in 2100 they will call it survival. The gap between rich and poor will become a canyon too wide to cross, and when despair meets power, revolutions will ignite. In the streets, protests will rise. People demanding the one thing that should never be for sale. Water. When thirst becomes rage, no government can contain it. What will freedom mean in a world where the air is toxic and water is a privilege? What will democracy mean when survival depends on wealth? This is not a story of technology. This is a story of humanity, what we value and what we choose to protect. The future can still be different. We have the knowledge, we have the tools. What we lack is the will. Imagine cities powered entirely by sun and wind. Imagine farms growing food vertically inside glowing towers. This is not a dream, it's possible today. Imagine oceans free of plastic, skies clear of smoke and rivers flowing clean again. The technology exists. What we need is courage. But courage requires sacrifice. It means letting go of greed. It means thinking beyond profit, beyond borders, beyond ourselves. The clock is ticking. Every year of delay locks and centuries of disaster. The question is not what science can do. It's what humanity will choose. Do we choose unity or division? Do we choose innovation or extinction? The future waits for our answer. And make no mistake, the future is not far away. Children born today will live to see the year 2100. Their world depends on our choices. When they look back, what will they see? Will they see a generation that acted with courage? Or one that watched the planet burn? This is not the end of humanity, but it could be the end of the world as we know it. The year 2100 will not be the apocalypse. It will be a test, the greatest test humanity has ever faced. We already know the danger. We already hold the solutions. What we lack is the decision to act. History is full of moments when humanity rose to the challenge. This is our moment, our chance to prove we are worthy of the future. The oceans do not care about politics. The storms do not wait for debates. Nature moves at its own pace, and that pace is accelerating. If we fail, the Earth will survive. It has survived worse, but we may not. So ask yourself, what kind of world do you want to leave behind? One of hope, or one of hunger and chaos? Because the future is not written in stone, it is written in the choices we make today. The choice is simple, adapt or collapse. There is no middle ground. We can build a future of green cities, clean energy, and shared abundance. Or we can watch civilization unravel piece by piece. In the end, the question is not whether the planet will survive, it is whether we will survive with it. The year 2100 is not the end, it is the beginning of a new era, an era that starts now with us.